All right, let's get this motherfucking Monday show started. Let's get it. Fuck that tough talk. That shit's irrelevant. Saying you pop off. That shit's irrelevant. If I get caught, you know I'm bailing it. If her ass off, yeah. you know I'm nailing it. Fuck that tough talk. Woo. That shit's irrelevant. Saying you pop off. That shit's irrelevant. <laughs> if I get caught, you know I'm bailing it. If her ass off, you know I'm nailing it. Ooh. By the way, the boy go by heist, man. I don't. What up, though? Heist Man the Foe, Talk That Talk, episode 64. Today is Monday, April the 29th. And right off the back, we're going to get into the birthdays of April 29th. It is Willie Nelson's birthday. Avid pot smoker. You know how he do. Um, he smokes pot. Willie Nelson. He a country singer, too. Long hair. I don't really know much about Willie Nelson, except that he smoked. Um, today is also Andre Agassi's birthday. Andre Agassi is the um, tennis player who had long hair. Then he went and bald. So, and he, he won a whole bunch of um, U.S. Opens, Wimbledon, stuff like that. So, big shout out to him for that. Um, Who else? Daniel Day-Lewis, today is his birthday. Dale Earnhardt, senior, Big E, you know, is his birthday. Jerry Seinfeld, Duke Ellington. This is also their birthday. Jerry Seinfeld, stand-up comedian, did the Seinfeld show. Uh, Duke Ellington was a jazz player. But two birthdays that it was um, th- uh, when I was going on this list, they kind of sh- struck my interest. Um, two females born on March 29th. And the two females are Uma Thurman and Michelle Pfeiffer. Both of their birthdays are today. So when I thought about that, the first thing I thought of was, hey, they both played in Batman, in Batman movies. Um, Uma Thurman, she played Poison Ivy. And Michelle Pfeiffer played Catwoman. So that was real dope. So I thought about that. I said, hey, Catwoman, Poison Ivy. What if they fought? Who will win? I have no idea who will win, but it'd be a nice fight. So big shout out to um, two supervillains. Super villainess, villainesses. I don't know what to say. But today is Uma Thurman and Michelle Pfeiffer's birthday. They both old bitches. No, I'm bullshit. <laughs> <coughs> I'm bullshit already today. Monday. I'm back, man. I just want to say what's up to everybody. I'm back. I'm back, baby. You know, I took a few days off to refresh, to relax, and, and not do shit. Tell you the truth. I miss doing it, though. But I'm back. So... Big shout out to everybody for being patient and waiting for the homie to come back to do this uh, talk that talk. I love doing this. Heist man is um. I love doing talk that talk. This is my shit, man. I love doing that. This is my little. This is my little um. My little outlet. I just get to talk a few bullshit subjects about nothing. Then I be back out out the game. You know, sit back and chill, relax. But we finna get into some birthdays today. No, damn, I already did that. <laughs> I'm already messing up. I'm trying to smoke this cigarette. I turned my damn camera on on accident. I don't know how to do this shit. Turn this off. Okay. All right. In 1992, on this date, the L.A. riots happened. Four white cops in L.A. were acquitted of beating the fuck out of Rodney King on camera too. They beat the shit out of him. Um, can we y'all get along? That's what his little famous words was when they beat him up. And um, Rodney King, he got paid. He got paid a lot of money for getting his ass whooped. But one thing I want to talk about, though, I want to talk that talk about, is every time that a um, black man gets shot, beat up, fucked up or something, when the press conference happened, it's always a fucking black, um, what do you call it? A black officer, deputy officer, or sheriff, or something. They always throw the black man out there. I don't know if you're trying to calm tensions down, or they just trying to. I don't know what they're doing. If you look at that shit, nine times out of ten, it's gonna be a black officer just sitting there addressing the people about the officers who, the white officers who beat up a motherfucker. And I think they um shouldn't fucking do it. You look stupid. 
They just beat the fuck out of your mans and them, and your black ass on on the news first thing. Oh, everything be all right, man. Y'all calm down, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, fuck that. You shouldn't let the shit happen. But just look at that shit from now on. Y'all see these motherfucking niggas get shot every day. Look who to be the first motherfucker on um on camera doing the press interview. It's gonna be a black cop. And what he gonna be doing? Telling everybody to calm down. All right, what else happened today in the news? Oh, on this date, I forgot what date it was. I didn't write it down, but Rocky Marciano, he retired on this day. He retired as the only boxer to go, like, whatever in O. I think it's Morse Code Day, but I've seen some research. I thought it was the 27th, so I'm not sure if today is actually um, Morse Code Day. I think it is, though, but it might not be. Oh, okay, in 1945... Adolf Hitler marries Eva Braun. His longtime girlfriend or whatever, or short time. But the crazy thing about it, they committed suicide the very next day. So that love must have been crazy. And the last thing I got in the news about today's date of April 29th is in 1967, Aretha Franklin, she releases her hit song, Respect. Yeah, fuck that. I'm bullshitting. But big shout out to Aretha Franklin for doing her song Respect. I like that shit. All right. All right. Let's get into some topics. I ain't got no topics, really. I think I got a topic. Oh, no, I do. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about my, um, somebody else's birthday today. Today is, um, my cousin's birthday. My cousin JK. I'm going to call, I'm gonna call it my cousin JK. I ain't going to say their name. JK. But the thing about JK is JK used to beat me up all the fucking time growing up. All the time. Like, beat me the fuck up. And I was, like, the youngest in my family, I'm the youngest um, child in my family. And I was like one of the youngest cousins. So me, my thing was I used to run and fight. I used to run. I used to hit them first and I take off running. And I fall to the ground and start kicking in the air. And my favorite words was, quit, bitch. My little voice, quit, bitch. I used to punch somebody and take off running. And whew, I get tired and I sit down I'm like, fuck this. And I get on the ground and I start kicking. You think I had wheels on my back the way I be turning to make sure they ain't never get to me. Just <laughs> but my cousin JK used to beat me up all the time. So one motherfucking time I couldn't take it no more. Instead of getting beat up, you know what I did? I picked up a fireplace poker and pow, hit JK in the motherfucking arm. And when I hit JK in the arm, JK started hyperventilating. <laughs> making all these weird noises and jk had a panic attack and guess what jk did jk had to go to the motherfucking hospital for having a panic attack bruised up arm and everything but jk didn't fuck with heist man no more and after that jk and the heist man was cool for the rest of our lives so big shout out and happy birthday to my cousin jk because today is jk's birthday on the 29th so big shout out to JK. And to make this an even weirder story, I hate to admit this, but JK was a girl. Heist <laughs> <sighs> man used to get beat up by a girl, man. My cousin girl. My cousin um, Primezilla is his sister. So big shout out to JK from beating the boy ass until he was like, I say about about 12 so I kept getting got you know she was older than me she was like 15 and she had them hair so and she done beat up plenty of niggas in their day so I ain't the only one and I ain't really getting beat beat up but I got beat up beat up but fuck that so it's the time of the since we gonna do that since I got beat up um by a girl from like 
9 to 12 years old. It's the time of the motherfucking episode when we take the nigga break. When we inhale and we exhale and we release the motherfucking nigga. So everybody, or you can release the cracker, the Jew, the hunky, the spig, the spade, the mooly, the wick, the wom, the wop, the jap, whatever racist term you want to use. Sometimes you just can't use it all the time in public. But if you don't own this show, when you listen to this, you be like, hey. I wanted to call that motherfucker Chinese motherfucker a chink today. And I ain't get a chance to. So this is the motherfucker chance to say that shit to get it off your chest. We call this the nigga break. So on the count of three, we finna get it in. One, two, three. <sighs> nigga. Goddamn, that was a good nigga. That was a nigga break for the day. All right, let's get back to some more topics. Ooh, another topic I want to talk about is the Game of Thrones. I watch Game of Thrones. I ain't gonna lie. I I can't lie. I like Game of Thrones. It's kind of dope. I've been watching it. Um, I started watching it last year, like at the um the end of last year when it came out. Nah, like man, I want to watch this shit. 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 Fuck it, I'm gonna watch this shit. So I started watching this shit. And I got all the way up to the damn last one, and I was like, okay, now I waited for like three months until this season came up. So I seen it. Okay, cool. The thing I'm on, I'm harping on, man, is um, Arya or Ari Stark. Is it Arya? It's the little girl though, man. She got the little sword called Needle. It's like John Stark little sister. The thing about it was, was got me fucked up about it is um. This is the last season of it, and they made the girl have a sex scene, man. And it kind of weirded me out because she's not a little girl anymore. She's of age now. She got at least be 18 that she's doing a sex scene. But I watched that little girl um, fucking grow up on TV, man. So when they do a sex scene, it's like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, my God. And I think they made her... I think it was CGI nude because, I don't know, they didn't really show the titties and all that. But she got, like, undressed and she fucked the dude. It was like, no, come on, don't do that. Why? I got to watch that. Like, I watched this little girl grow up. So that's, like, weird. And it brings me to the same thing that happened um, on another show called Shameless with Debbie. Debbie Gallagher. She was a little girl. Nine seasons later, they have her having sex. It's like, oh, no, that's crazy. I don't like seeing that stuff. <clears throat> so um that's weird that's always been weird to me that's how i just want to get off my damn chest this some weird stuff that was my um my talk that talk that i wanted to talk about thought to light up some of this mary J. let me smoke it a little bit i got i got my headphones on so i can't really Hear shit sometimes. I'm trying to make sure I do this shit. Have the best fucking um, sound quality I can have. While I'm doing this. Heist man here kind of nappy. I'm kind of cut it a little bit. But it's alright. I'm back in the game. <sighs> Messing my new light. I got me a little blue light over here. I just turned it off. Got my lights on. But we just had this little red one. But yeah. Let's talk some more of that talk. I got this um, new segment I want to do. And I call it the morning middle finger. The reason I call it the morning middle finger, it comes from two people. It comes from my, my five-year-old and it comes from my homeboy, Ray, Ray Rollins. Every time, like, I talk to um, Ray on Skype and shit throughout the week before, between shows and shit. It's like a real good homie of mine. I don't talk to that many people, but I don't talk, especially I don't talk to that many people outside the community, especially on Skype calls and shit, but I talk to him. And every time we talk, my little five-year-old, she likes to come up to the um, screen and put a middle finger up there to Ray. So every time she thinks it's Ray, so it's the middle finger. If she want to get Ray the middle finger, I have no idea, no reason why. Well, she don't like his emoji picture, the, the man with his hands in his pocket and the glasses. She don't like that. So she always want to give it the middle finger. So she always coming up to the screen. I'm like, man, yo, chill out. Ray not even on the call right now. 
I'm just sitting at my computer. I'm not actually talking to Ray. But she come and get my computer screen the middle finger all the time. So one morning, um, as I was getting my kids ready for school, she was in the bed still. And I said, hey, what's up? It's time to get up. And she, she said, no, I don't want to get up. I'm like, come on. And she gave me the middle finger. I said, hey, what are you giving me the middle finger for? She said, it's the morning middle finger. I said, oh, my God, it was so funny to me. I just bust out laughing. I'm like, hey, I want to do that. I want to give somebody the motherfucking morning middle finger. Something like um, donkey of the day or just, or it could be like Ray, nigga of the week. But I don't think it's going to be nothing good. It might be all bad. I, sometimes you want to say fuck you to somebody. And every morning, it's not going to be Monday morning middle finger. It's going to be morning middle finger to everybody. Every day, you know. Sometimes you got to get that morning middle finger. Whatever happened to me the day before, I'm going to think about it and say, hey, I want to get a morning middle finger to this person. So, today, on the first motherfucking ever morning middle finger, I want to give the morning middle finger to my oldest children. And you know why I want to get a morning middle finger to my oldest children? Because every weekend, they dip out. They leave. They leave for the weekend. They get home. They do their chores. Then they bounce. Gone for the weekend. Gone. So Sunday night, they come home, and they want to start washing clothes and, you know, getting all their shit ready for school Monday. Then they asked me to dry their clothes all through the night because they be going to sleep and they know I stay up, you know. So they want to um, get me to dry their clothes. So Saturday night, I was on a Skype call with Ray and I explained to him the same shit. And I declared to him, I'm like, yo, when they come home Sunday night, I'm not going to dry their clothes for them. I'm not going to do it. I put my foot down. And I wound up doing it anyway, so... I was drying clothes <laughs> last night because I did it. And only, I want to take a stand to do it because I try, I'm trying to teach them responsibilities. I want to be like, yo, do that shit Friday when you come home from school. I mean, yeah, we come home from school. I, I dry them um, during the weekend if I'm home or something. I mean, I dry them like if you come home and you do your chores and you put a clo load of clothes in the washing machine. I, you know, I throw them in the dryer for you. Then they be ready. I put them on your bed. You know, but no, they come home, they do their shit, and they beeline out the door, ask for some money, and go. I'm talking about they dip. I'm talking about, I don't see the kids the whole weekend. Call them, hey, what's up? You still alive? Okay, cool. Oh, they don't call shit. They don't say nothing. They don't call the house. They don't do nothing unless they need some money. And that's just wrong. This is wrong. They gangsters like that. And, um, it's just crazy, man. And I, I just, I, I swore up and down I wasn't going to do it because I know the game. It goes down every week. Every Sunday, every Sunday night, they fucking um, start washing clothes and they start asking me to do it. I'll be like, damn, come on, man. And the crazy thing about it is like, they want to load the washing machine up. 100 pair of jeans, 100 goddamn sweater. It feel like they don't, it's like we live in Florida. Well, y'all don't even wear pants. So you got to pull them all out the dryer. Put them all, I mean, all about, okay, that bullshit. So you got to put them all out the washing machine, put them in the dryer, dry the motherfuckers, then about the out, and you hear this big ass ant going because the damn dryer didn't stop. So you go in there, open up the thing, they still moist. You got to dry them again. And it's like, man, I just want to teach them responsibilities. Like, yo, if I don't do this shit for y'all, y'all not going to have, dry clothes or you know to wear to school in the morning time but then that comes back on me because then they don't they want to miss school or try to miss school or if they do miss school because they have nothing to wear it's crazy man so i'll be like nah fuck that y'all going to school i dry them shits man so big motherfucking middle finger too morning middle finger go to the kids and that's how i be man this is some random heist shit going on at the heist home. That's why I decided to do that little, little segment called Morning Middle Finger. But yeah, they always trying to get me, man, to put some shit in the drive for them. I wish I had a top, I only have a top tier for this shit, man. What I got going on, man? Do I got some music to play? Oh, no. 
Um, what's my nigga name? Ray. I seen the Skype chat. He said, um, he put one of my songs in the Skype chat. Like, I like this. I'm like, yeah. I'm dope, nigga. <laughs> so I'm going to play it. Left step, right step, left. We go march. Right step, left step, right step, left. We go march. Right step, left step, right step, left. We go march. Right step, left step, right step, left. We go march. Who motherfucker? Who motherfucker? It's me. My life on the edge of sin. Yes, I'm guilty. Simply, I'm the best to ever doubt me. Grimy, me mug in a white tee. You're not a threat to me. Your beef has no salt. So if you're battling me, you know that you're a loss. My fault, I ought to walk away. But no way, I spray. Your days are all gray. That's what's up. Uh, that's what's happening. I'm for real. You just acting. You just lacking. Matter of facting. You just jacking. I'm North Khaki. Yes, I'm packing. Blow, watch your backing. You just talking. But I'm stacking. Say you pimping. But I'm macking, you can't flow, no way you're whacking. Right step, left step, right step, left, we gon' march. Right step, left step, right step, left, we gon' march. Right step, left step, right step, left, we gon' march. Right step, left step. Right step, left, we gon' march. Nigga, that lame talk, save it for the haters. That shit won't stop me from getting to the paper. So till that day, I got a meeting with the maker. I stay at war with all the motherfucking fakers. You niggas, I step on sidewalk thugs. So watch your talk, pussy, you might get slugs. I'ma get this dope, you niggas keep it in the clubs. I rap from B mode, the game's built slum. Yo, I hold my own in the lyrical ciphers. I spit them 16s that'll put you in diapers. I move at the speed of lightning about to strike you and you can be dumb and let your homeboys hype you and i'ma show you niggas who the best at it it's springzilla better known as the excellence i spit effortless cause i'm blessed at this super folk shit ain't nobody testing it what right step left step right step left we gon' march right step left step right step left we gon' march right step left step right step Left, we gon' march. Right step, left step, right step, left, we gon' march. All right. That was Primzilla and Critical Heights. We gon' march. That was a song we did a long time ago. Pretty dope still. I like it. Um, Like I said, the homie Ray said he liked this song. I was like, wow. Because, you know... <coughs> I don't have that many fans and I always um in a forever beef with Ray Rawlins over my lyrical content and shit like that. So um big shout out to Ray for liking one of my songs. He said he fuck with my shit. Sometimes he say he do. Sometimes he like, oh nah, fuck that nigga, you trash or horrible. So I'm always on my forever quest to impress Ray Rawlins with my music and since he liked that song, I'm a I had to play it, you know. Hey, big props to me, I guess. You know. It was, it's always a little thing between me, Ray, and Alex. Um, I got uh, me. I'm a very likable person. I say I think I am, so I always try to um, stay liked, you know. And Ray always coming at me about my music, and Alex he always coming at me about my smarts, and I like getting him because if, I feel if I get that motherfucker, I got something because he's a very knowledgeable person, and he's a very I say sensible, moral person. He thinks both sides, but he think both sides as soon as you fucking say something, he's like, hey, but the opposite of you're like, God damn, nigga, let that sink in first. Nope. Not Alex. Not the motherfucking chessboard Alex, the motherfucking game piece. That's what that nigga is. A fucking game piece. See, I always trying to maneuver and get somebody in some kind of way. So... Big shout out to Alex Payne and Ray Rollins, man. And I think this is going to end Talk That Talk f for this dumb day. Uh, I ain't really got much to talk about. Talk That Talk. Yep. So, this has been Talk That Talk episode 64 with your boy, Heist Man the Fool. That shit sound crazy. Your boy, Heist Man. 
Yeah. All right. So, fuck with your boy, Heist Man the Foe. Talk that talk. Episode motherfucking. What is. Ah, oh, I fucked up. I fucked up, man. I just turned this camera on. And shit fucking with me now. I see the glare of the light and shit. Getting out this bitch, though, man. Like I said. Fuck with your boy, Heist Man the Folk. Talk that talk, episode 64. Peace.